IEEE 754 is the standard for how real numbers are stored on most computers. In this video, we'll learn how real numbers get stored in the machine and how that affects the way multiplication and addition of real numbers are done by the CPU. Before we do that, if you need a refresher on converting between decimal, binary, and hexadecimal, click on the link above to get my video about that. The first question is what do real numbers look like in binary? Just like in decimal, positions represent the powers of two on both sides of the decimal point. So the positions to the left of the decimal point represent the positive powers of two, one, two, four, eight, and so on, while the positions to the right of the decimal point are the negative powers of two, a half, a quarter, an eighth, and so on. For me, it's easier to think about the two parts of the number separately. In this case, 27 is 11011 in binary. For this presentation, numbers displayed in binary will have a subscript of B for clarity. 0 0.25 is a quarter, which is 2 to the negative 2. So 0 0.25 in decimal is 0 0.01 in binary. We can put those two results together to get the binary result. Pause the video and try this one by yourself. For this, I just convert the two parts to binary by finding the set of positions whose values sum to the number we want to represent. Turn on those bits and we have the binary representation. When computers store real numbers, they use a strategy called floating point, which is kind of like scientific notation. In scientific notation, we represent real numbers in a form that positions decimal points consistently to make comparisons of the numbers simpler. Basically, we slide the decimal point until only one digit is to the left of it, and then we multiply by the power of 10 that puts the decimal point back where it belongs. Essentially, one real number requires two parts, the mantissa and the exponent. Then the value being represented by the mantissa is multiplied by the base of the number raised to the power of the exponent. When the numbers are digital, that base is 10, but the computer thinks in binary, so it will use a base of two. IEEE 754 floating point numbers store a real value using three fields in 32 or 64 bit representations. The representation will use the highest order bit, the bit furthest to the left for the sign bit, where a one says that the number is negative and zero says that it is positive. The next field in the representation holds the exponent. In order to store positive and negative exponents, it stores a biased exponent that adds a constant to the exponent's value. For 32-bit numbers, it gives eight bits to the exponent, so there are 256 possible values. Adding 127 to the exponent means that the range of exponent values it can represent is negative 127 to 128. For 64-bit numbers, there are 11 bits for the exponent, and the bias it adds is 1,023. That limits the exponent values to the range of negative 1,023 to 1,024. The last part we have to store is the mantissa. The rule in IEEE 754 floating point numbers is that we shift the decimal point until there is exactly a single one to the left of it. Then, since we know that bit is a one, we only store the bits to the right of the decimal point. This is called the normalized mantissa. The number of bits given to the mantissa also varies by the size of the floating point representation. Let's look at an example of how 27.25 is stored in IEEE 754 32-bit floating point. 27.25 is 11001.01 in binary. We shift the decimal point to the left four positions so that only a single one is left to the left of it. That gives us an exponent of four. Now that we have it in binary, there are a couple of conversions we need to do. The biased exponent will have the value of 4 plus 127, which is 131. Convert that to binary. The normalized mantissa is everything to the right of the decimal point. We fill with zeros. We build the word by putting the sign bit, followed by the exponent, followed by the mantissa. The machine will see them in bytes and we convert that to hex to make it more readable. Pause and practice converting a number to IEEE 754 floating point. Try it yourself before you look at Merlin's answer. 
Converting the fractional part of 65.75 into binary requires noticing that 75 is a half plus a quarter, so that turns two bits on. Shifting the decimal point gives us an exponent of 6. That means our biased exponent will be 133. Put together the pieces, split it into bytes, and convert it to hex to make it more readable for us poor humans. Now, practice going the other way. Split it up into three parts. Unbiased the exponent, unnormalize the mantissa. Now, all we have to do is move the decimal point the amount the exponents tell us to and convert it to decimal. Now that we know how floating point numbers are stored, we can begin to explore how mathematical operations on this representation work. We'll start with multiplication. First, a note on notation. In these slides, I need to be able to distinguish between the value of the exponent and the mantissa and their representations in the machine. When I'm talking about their value, I will use EV and MV. When I'm talking about their representations, I'll use BE for biased exponent and NM for normalized mantissa. The multiplication of two floating point numbers looks like this. Be careful. Notice, she is talking about the values of the mantissa and the exponent, not their representations in IEEE 754. We can rearrange the terms to put the exponents next to each other. That lets us simplify into a form that looks like a floating point number. This will be the resulting mantissa, and this will be the resulting exponent. Let's look at an example. We're multiplying two positive numbers, and here are the two parts as they are stored in IEEE 754 representation, the normalized mantissas and the biased exponents. We need to convert those to be the values they represent. Put a one and a decimal point in front of the normalized mantissa to get its value, and subtract 127 from the biased exponent to get its value. Then, we just have to follow the formula to find the values for the mantissa and the exponent of the result. Use the exponent to shift the decimal point in the mantissa to get the value they represent together. But now, is that right? Yup! One last note. The mantissa we are showing has two digits to the left of the decimal point. The machine would renormalize that and change the exponent to match. We definitely need to practice that. Pause the video and try to solve this one on your own before you watch the solution. The first thing I do is remember that the mantissa value of the result is the product of the mantissa values, and the exponent value of the result is the sum of the exponent values. Add the one in the decimal point to get the mantissa values. For the exponents, just to convert to decimal and subtract 127 to unbias them. So the hardest, or at least the most tedious thing to do is to multiply the mantissa values. I do it just like regular multiplication, but it's easier because we're only multiplying by one or zero. So each one in the bottom number will result in the top number justified below it. Marlon only realized after she'd done all of this math that she could have put them in the other order. Since the number on the top has fewer ones, the math would have been easier if she had put it on the bottom. That's very true. Forgot that trick until it was too late. Anyway, once you do it, it's just binary addition to complete the multiplication. Now we have the mantissa value of the result. The exponent value of the result will be the sum of the exponent values of the operands, which gives us 81. To build the IEEE 754 representation of the result, we have to bias the exponent, normalize the mantissa, and stick the pieces together. Group them into bytes and convert to hex to make it human readable. While it's good to be able to do the math, there are calculators that do the binary arithmetic for you. We aren't opposed to that. However, you need to understand the difference between the parts of IEEE 754 and the values they represent. So showing your work like we've done on the left is really important. Before we do addition in IEEE 754 floating point, let's do it in scientific notation. Suppose we want to add two numbers. Because of the way they look, and because we want to end up with a number that is in scientific notation, 
we'd like to use the distributive law to pull out the terms that are the powers of 10. However, we can't do that because the exponents are different. In order to make them match, we can move the decimal point of one of the mantises in order to change the exponent need, it needs to be multiplied by. Once the exponents match, we can pull them out with the distributive law. A little addition, and we have the scientific notation representation of the sum. Before she starts on the IEEE 754 version of that, remember the notation that she's using to distinguish what gets stored from the value it represents. Thanks for the reminder. Adding two floating point numbers starts off looking like scientific notation in the power of two. So we're going to handle it the same way. To figure out how far to move the decimal point, we calculate the difference between the two exponents. IEEE 754 will always put the larger number first, so x will always be positive. Notice that the difference between the exponent values is the same as the difference between the biased exponents, so the machine doesn't have to unbias the exponents at all. Once we know the difference between the exponents, we now know how far we need to shift the mantissa of the second number. In the math, we write that as multiplying it by 2 to the x, but the machine will just shift the bits to the right, loading in the one that we dropped when we normalized the mantissa. So, for the result, shift one of the mantissas and add them to get the resulting mantissa. The exponent of the result will be the exponent of the first operand. Let's show how the machine will add the numbers that we used in the multiplication example. We know what their values were, so the sum we should end up with should be 160. The result will depend on the mantissa values, so we need to unnormalize them. The machine wouldn't do that. It would just add the normalized shifted mantissas, tack a 1, 0, binary 2 on the front, and renormalize. But you humans are weaker than that, so we'll do it on paper. This is easier to follow. I agree. Anyway, x is the difference of the exponents, and we can leave them biased for that calculation, so x is 1. Shift the second mantissa value and add them up. The resulting exponent will be 133 minus 127, which is 6, and the value of our result is 160. Your turn. Same numbers as the multiplication practice. First, remember the rules. Since these are the same numbers we use for the multiplication practice, I copied our calculations of the mantissa and the exponent values here, even though we don't need the unbiased exponents. x is 5. Shift the decimal point of the second mantissa value and add them. For this one, the numbers are way too big to find their values. I'm just going to give the result in IEEE 754 format. Sign bit of 0, exponent from the first operand, and normalize the mantissa we calculated. Group into bytes, convert in hex to be human readable, done. I hope this video helped you understand IEEE 754 floating points better. Even if you aren't a computer engineer who cares about the bits, knowing how the representation affects the way the machine does the math can help you write better code with less round-off error in its real number calculations. Think about addition. What happens to the mantissa of the second number if the exponents are really different? Maybe Merlin ought to make a video about that.